So, good day. And uh, we are going to be doing fight two of Ops and Gang today, 2014 clock basis. So, we divide it into two parts. This is the first question 20 year old patient complains of amenorrhea. You know, and objectively, there is a citizen and obesity with fat tissue prevailing on the face and so on so but the most important thing to note is obesity and which you can find in some other conditions there but most importantly you notice the strike cutis there is all the strike cutis in condition of uh Ushiko Kusin syndrome Ushiko Kusin syndrome so you can go further to read other things though in this page you can also have this in baby skin fully syndrome this is adiposo uh, genital dystrophy but it's one of the major causes of uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea stain uh, levanter syndrome is also the same thing as um, polycystic ovarian syndrome share and syndrome they will give you history of a patient with uh, blood loss postpartum hemorrhage internal syndrome one of the major causes of ovarian amenorrhea so this striacutis is typical for Shaco Cousin syndrome. 27 year old woman suffers from pyonephritis of only kidney. You know, you must have come across many patients having um, gestational pyonephritis, uh, maybe in second trimester or third trimester. But in this patient, it's just at 11 weeks of uh, gestation, 11 weeks, which is really, really dangerous for the health of the pregnant mother. So. In this condition, what is doctor's tactics? The best thing to do here is to uh, do immediate pregnancy interruption as far as this case is concerned. 18 year old primary gravida in her 27 to 28 week of gestation underwent an operation on account of acute phlegmonous appendicitis. You know, in the post operative period, what measures? Do you take what do you want to prevent in the in this post-operative period the most important thing here is to prevent like a uh, miscarriage or to prevent any form of abortion as a result of the surgical procedure that's the most important complication that you want to actually uh, prevent and that is what they mean by non-carrying of pregnancy non-carrying of pregnancy 24 year old female patient complains of uh, acute pain in lower abdomen uh, that turned up after a physical stress. She was having nausea, vomiting, and body temperature of 36 and 6, dry mouth. She has a right ovarian cyst in history. Right ovarian cyst in history. By manual examination, reveals that it was dense, painless, of normal size. So the left phonix is deep, the appendages are not palpable. And you can see a round elastic. Uh, a mobile structure that is about seven by eight centimeter large. So, what is the most likely that this is the ovarian cyst, and the cause of the acute pain is probably due to the torsion of that particular cyst. When the cyst is twisted, it becomes very painful in the patient. So, that's the, this is just the most correct answer. Yeah, uterine size is then painless and abnormal size could exclude uh, pregnancy in this particular patient. A parturient woman is 23 years old. Vaginal obstetric examination reveals full cervical dilatation. You know, fetal head is a plane of pelvic outlet. Cytal seizure is in uh, mesotic pelvic uh, pelvis. This is like the region where you have the anterior posterior diameter and the transverse diameter being equal. So the fetal head in such presentation is going to be uh, subhospital uh, pragmaticus. This pragmaticus is where the coronal seizure and the sagittal seizure meets, and that is the most common uh, diameter you are going to be having in this kind of condition and even if they are not telling us about this uh, mesalty pelvic pelvis and they just ask a normal question like this it's still best to go for sub hospital pragmaticus diameter all right if we have a 26 year old woman admitted to us before abdominal pain and bleeding from the genital tract Bermina is a mention with the uterus size of nine weeks of pregnancy Cervical cannot let a finger through. Fetal tissues could be palpated in the orifice. Normally, you are not supposed to palpate uh, fetal tissue in the orifice. So, there was 
moderate vaginal bleeding. You know, you're having abdominal pain with bleeding. Already you're thinking of one form of abortion. But since you can actually uh, palpate the fetal tissues in the uh, in the orifice of the cervix, your tactics of choice is that you are thinking that this is a patient with an incomplete abortion. And the best thing to do there is to extract the remaining fetal tissue because after some time it might become uh, uh, toxic for the mother. So it's instrumental extraction of fetal tissue. This is like a case of incomplete abortion. That's the best thing you do. A 14 year old woman has had hyperpolymenorrhea and progressing algo dysmenia for the last 10 years. Gynecology examination revealed no changes of uterine service. Discharges are moderate of chocolate color and just to save time also in the exam we've said earlier that when you see chocolate color you are thinking of endometriosis but here you discover that the appendages are not palpable that is this is not like uh, endometriosis in the ovary or in the fallopian tube or so this is directly in the uterus itself so um, what is the most likely uh, diagnosis. So this type from the uterus itself is the one that is having the chocolate color. So this is uterine endometriosis. Chocolate color is always endometriosis. On the 10th day after discharge from the maternity house, a two-year-old patient con uh, consulted the doctor about body temperature provided. This shouldn't be two-year-old. You can think maybe of 28 or something. Pain in the right breast, my gland is enlarged. This is just 10 days after delivery and patient is having uh, lactostasis and every other thing that has to do with the mammary gland. The fact is, what is the most likely diagnosis? This is associated with breastfeeding. This is lactational mastitis, like not any of this, just 10 days lactational mastitis, even though the temperature of up to 39. And they told you that fluctuation is absent, so you are not thinking of absence. All right, we have during the dynamic examination of a uh, paternal woman in the second stage of labor, you can see that the fetal heart rate fell to 1900, and we've had a similar uh, question like this. And we then I gave us some indications for our forceps delivery, but you will notice in also in this particular patient pointing to forceps delivery and not caesarean section is the fact that the vaginal examination revealed that there is complete cervical uh, dilatation. In this kind of patients, you might want to assist just with forceps and not caesarean uh, delivery. So reading all through other things because that these are normal variants. So what plan of further labor management should be recommended? It is the application of forceps. I don't know what's uh, I'm not familiar with this uh, application cavity forceps, but I know this is the usual obstetric forceps. 27 year old sexually active patient complains of numerous vesicles. Vesicles, um, I'm sure you are thinking of uh, possibly something viral and most likely together with right sex sleep, each and burning. Eruptions regularly turn up before menstruation and disappear 8 to 10 days uh, thereafter. So it's actually none of this condition is, uh, is this is Eplis simplex, one that produces castratic vesicles, and uh, is before menstruation and disappeared eight days after menstruation. So this Eplis simplex virus. Thirty-six year old female presented to a gynecologist hospital with significant bleeding from the genital tract. So you have bleeding and one more delay of menstruation. By many examination with a soft barrier shaped cervix, the cervix is of normal size. Appendages are unremarkable on both sides. Speculum examination with that the cervix is cyanotic. You see, normally, cervix is not supposed to be uh, cyanotic. And the, after one month, they are supposed to tell us that there is a little enlargement of uterus. But here we have uterus being of normal size. So, Speculum examination of this or cyanotic enlarged with the external of this disclosed up to 0.5 cm. HCG test was positive just to further indicate that this patient is pregnant. What is the most likely diagnosis? When they tell you that the service is cyanotic, think first of a cervical pregnancy. It's also an abnormal variant, cervical pregnancy. 
All right. Reading through this question. See, complaints of blood discharge from genitals for the last 14 days. And some body temperature rise. Five weeks ago, she underwent induced abortion in six to seven weeks. After abortion, yet a woman is having positive HCG test. What could be the major cause of that? The number one thing to think of is a choreal epithelioma. You know, the chorion is also like uh, developed from the uh, tissues, the trophoblastic cells. And it is in this condition that you still have HCG being very positive in the patient. So when they give you history of different things and they are telling that HCG is positive, yet when there is no more pregnancy, see this in this abortion is a case of uh, choreal epithelioma, not any other thing in this condition. Okay, in this particular question, we are just going to differentiate just this patellar gland state and acute patellitis in a patient body temperature of 38. I can see acute pain in lower third of left labor majora. This disease began suddenly after menstruation. Extremely painful to touch with signs of fluctuation. What is the most likely diagnosis? Now, this sign, this symptom of fluctuation is a little bit misleading in this question. But take note of the temperature to be 38 and labia major has a formation of 3 cm. So if they are telling you that one part of the labia major, the left part is having such a formation, you are thinking of something instead with the uh, Bartholin gland. So but the question is, is it acute Bartholinitis or Bartholin gland cyst? You see, Bartholin gland cyst is usually obstruction of the uh, Bartholin gland duct and it is not infectious. When there is an infectious complication, then you can be talking about a Bartholin gland abscess. And thank God we don't have battling gland abscess in this particular question. So that uh, makes this symptom of fluctuation to be slightly insignificant. So the correct answer here is the acute battlinitis. See, acute pain in left order. Acute battlinitis. Acute battlinitis. The next correct answer will be battling gland abscess. A 28 years old woman complains of nausea and vomiting about 10 times per day. So she has been found to have body weight loss and xerodamia. The pulse is 100, body temperature is 37 degrees is low. Ultrasound shows 56 weeks of pregnancy. What is the most likely uh, diagnosis? So here we are talking about early gestosis. And if a patient is having nausea and vomiting for about 10 times per day, normally if it is the mild degree of vomiting, you are talking about two to four times a day. And in the moderate variant, you are talking about more than 10 times, uh, up to 10 times and more than 10 times a day. So when they give any variant around 10 times or a little bit more than 10 times a day, that is moderate vomiting of uh, pregnancy. Mind vomiting is 2 to 4. A 40-week pregnant second para is 28 years old. See, contractions are very active. Retraction ring is at the level of nervous uterus is hypertonic. Form of our glass on the scotation of fetal sounds are door at which is 100 low in this situation. Your pressure is 130. What's the most likely diagnosis? When they are telling you all these things, especially the fact that the uterus is hypertonic, you know, shy that the blood pressure begins to uh, the artery begins to decelerate. The, the pa this particular patient due to this hypertonicity is at risk, not yet. If it is, assuming the answer is uh, complete hysteresis, hysteresis is uh, uterine rupture. The blood pressure is not going to be normal. It's going to be like maybe they can tell us 80 or so. The patient is in shock, but they give us this blood pressure for a reason. This patient is simply at risk of hysteresis due to the pathogenicity of the uterus. So this is just risk of uterine rupture. After delivery and revision of placenta, there was found a defect of placental lobule. General condition of woman is normal, it was is firm. There's a moderate bloody discharge after delivery and revision of placenta. You see, you find defect of placenta. Speculum inspection of bed canal shows absence of laceration. What action is necessary? We've talked about this more than two occasions when there's defect of placenta tissue. You want to do a manual exploration of the uterine cavity to remove the. Uh, the part of the placenta left uh, behind. This is a 25 year old patient that complains of body temperature is 37, pain at the bottom of her abdomen and vaginal discharges. Three days ago, 
she was in her 11 week of pregnancy she had an artificial abortion so what could be cause that uh, temperature rise and signs of uh, infection in the patient that just undergone artificial abortion see vaginal discharges are sanguinopurulent this is like uh, pulse together with um, blood admixtures what is the most probably diagnosis and the best answer here is something that is happening after this abortion so this is not a perforation this is endometritis endometritis post uh, abortion endometritis you know in uterine preparation that's we had a question like that in which we had to use an insurance sounding or pro to uh, to evaluate that a 25 year old pregnant woman at 34 week was taken to maternity house in a very grave condition notice the blood pressure is 170 by 130 and then you are now having convulsions convulsions tonic and chronic convulsions and we said that the difference between severe preeclampsia and eclampsia is the presence or absence of is the presence or absence of uh, seizures and here we are having seizure so this is a condition of eclampsia 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 is severe preeclampsia plus seizures all right 51 year old patient complains of having intense blood discharge from vagina for 15 days after delay of menstruation for 2.5 months, you know, notice the age, like around the climateric period. In anam anamnesis, disorders of menstruation function during a year. At the same time, she felt extreme irritability and sleep disorders. Ultrasound examination results. Uterus correspond with age norm and so on. What is the doctor's um, tactics in a woman that is around menopause and is having? Bloody discharges, you know, we've never been wrong choosing a diagnostic curatage of uterine cavity. Okay, we have 18 year old patients, painfulness and swelling of mammary gland, headache, irritability, edema of lower extremities. These symptoms have been present since the beginning of menarche. Appears three to four days before regular menstruation. Gynecologic examination review no pathology. What is the most? See, when I tell you that all these symptoms are appearing just before regular menstruation, they give you maybe like five days, three to four days, and so on. It is simply a premenstrual syndrome. Premenstrual syndrome. Okay. We have 22 year old patient with dog pain in right iliac area that have been she had been experiencing for a week morning sickness and constitutive change history of menstruation delay for three weeks thinking she's pregnant you can notice her blood pressure is 80 50. see she's low blood temperature of 37 permanent examination is that uterus is enlarged soft mobile and painless uterine appendages are palpable on the right you see uh, elastic and moderately painful formation 3 by 4 cm large was the most likely diagnosis this is a case of ectopic pregnancy ectopic pregnancy you can see that it's in the right uterine tube but the question is is it a progressing fallopian pregnancy or an interrupted fallopian pregnancy if it is interrupted as at this moment we are going to have all this pain but not really like the signs of our still being pregnant and the child is still being alive. These are signs of early hormonal discharges in uh, the mother, ACG, and so on. That means that this pregnancy is still progressing. So, this is a progressing fallopian pregnancy. Progressing fallopian. If it is interrupted, you are going to have bloody discharge also, probably in this kind of patient. All right, 30 year old parent woman was taken to maternity house with complaints of having acute regular labor pains that last 35 to 25 to 30 seconds every 1.5 to 2 minutes you know that this labor activity began six hours ago they didn't tell us whether this is a primary para or a multi para patient however it is in higher tonus head of fetus is above opening small pelvis fetal heartbeat is normal cervical dilatation is four centimeter and we said earlier that greater than four centimeters we are talking about second state of level so the question is head is at level opening into the small pelvis what is the most probable uh, diagnosis in this patient 
Now I want us to take note of something in uh, discoordinated labor activity. Discoordinated labor activity is very common in during the period of labor, but after some short interval of time, it progresses into a normal period of labor activity. I said earlier, usually in the second period, we can have up to 35 to 40 seconds, like every three minutes. So this is just a state of discoordinated labor activity. This is for this patient, we cannot say this is normal based on this time variant, but every other thing is is not a sign of pathological preliminary period. They will tell us more uh, things to show pathology in this place. And there's contraction. We are not talking about powerless labor activity in this patient. See, it was is having eye tone, so it has nothing to do with uh, uterine inertia, secondary or primary in this case. So this is just a, sim a simple case of discoordinated labor activity that would later become uh, normal. Primary gravida woman appeared to antenatal clinic on 22nd so the complaints of boring pain in the lower part of abdomen. Anamnesia is that her last menstruation was this Babana examination with the internal services intact. There is a large up to ninth week of pregnancy. Ninth week of pregnancy. So what complication can be uh, suspected what complication can be suspected in this kind of patient this is a patient that is is a lower abdominal pain without any bloody uh, discharge is just like a case of uh, is similar to a patient that's going to just be having threatened abortion not yet uh, the abortion have not started so this is also a risk of abortion in a patient of nitric there's no bloody discharge it's just a risk 25 year old female patient complains of having amenorrhea for three years. She has said with difficult labor, complicated by massive hemorrhage. She also complains of weight loss, hair fragility, and so on. Objective examination will no pathological changes of uterus. See, when we have massive hemorrhage, postpartum, massive postpartum hemorrhage in a patient, thereafter the patient develops amenorrhea. We've said over and over again that this is a case of Cheyenne syndrome. Cheyenne syndrome. And in Cheyenne syndrome, this is the actual or anterior pituitary necrosis. There's going to be hypoproduction of gonadotropins, FSH and LH. 30 year old patient consulted a doctor by menstruation absence for two years after labor. Loss of air, body weight loss. Labor was complicated by a hemorrhage caused by ut uterus hypotonia. You see, we just explained it actually. So this is a case of Cheyenne syndrome due to bleeding. I say bleeding. You see, this is just a case telling us about a patient that is having infection and so on. And how do we know which of the bacteria is causing it? They are telling us that this is a diplococcal bacteria. Which of these bacteria here is a diplococcal bacteria? And that is just one here. And that is... Uh, this area of gonococcus is gonorrhea in this case. A right, 25 year old woman came to a maternity welfare clinic and complained about being unable to conceive within three years of regular sexual life. Excessive weight gain, male pattern of head distribution of pelvis, excessive paralysis of thighs, and notice something here ovaries were dense and enlarged, basal temperature was mono. Basic. What is the most likely uh, diagnosis in such patient that is having weight gain and so on? He said within three years of regular sex. So we are not talking about anything uh, premenstrual. She don't know tuberculosis. Right? This is just going to be signs of uh, inflammation in the uh, ovary. And because she is actually having. Uh, even though there is male pattern, but we still have signs of puberty in this particular patient. So it is this is not uh, gonadal dysgenesis. This is a patient that is uh, based on the fact that the basal temperature is monophasic. It means that the ovary is not performing its function, and its sclerotic tissue will not secrete will not be secretive, and that's why the answer here is uh, sclerocytosis of uh, ovaries and that's why just based on the fact that basal temperature was uh, monophasic in these patients 
All right, 22 year old, 28 year old patient complained about prolongation of intermenstrual periods up to two months. Exhibition. Can I tell guys? I'm sure if you that the ovaries were enlarged, painless, compact. Every quarter, I feel that ovaries were four by five centimeter in diameter and had multiple enlarged follicles on periphery. But they are telling that there are multiple enlarged follicles. All these things, they are cysts. And another word for multiple in this case is just poly. It is a condition of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. And uh, another name for polycystic ovarian syndrome is Stein Leventhal syndrome. Stein Leventhal syndrome. See, there are 10 other heads. It's called X ray of the skull. The strain of cellular region was dilated. So, due to SSC stimulation, Stein Leventhal syndrome. 32 year old gravidar complaints of episodes of unconsciousness, spontaneous syncope that are quickly over after a change of body position. A syncope that can be accompanied by quickly elapsing bradycardia. When they are telling you about a pregnant woman that is having syncope that is quickly uh, accompanied by quickly elapsing bradycardia, there are no other complications of gestation. This is just the pregnant woman. Uh, the enlarged uterus causing pressure on the inferior vena cava, and that is like inferior vena cava syndrome. This patient, so this is a post cava compression by gravity uterus. That's the major cause of this. And you notice it's actually with a change of body position. One of the major way to believe that is just to um, tell the man to uh, relax on the other side, so as to relieve the pressure on the inferior vena cava. A woman consulted a therapist about fatigability, significant weight loss, loss of appetite. She had amenorrhea for eight months. A year ago, she had hemorrhage during labor made up up to two liters. So this is condition of Shea syndrome. All right. And again, we have a 54-year-old patient with bloody discharges for one month. I think we don't. We may not really need to read questions like this again before choosing our diagnostic fractional COVID age of. See, 28 year of female patient complains of hemorrhage from genital tract for one month. Six months ago, she had natural delivery and gave birth to a girl weighing this. It does this in lab 90 10 weeks. Examination with vaginal cyanosis, anemia, and body rise to 37.8. There is significant rise in ACG, that is in in urine. When they're telling that such significant rise, that something they are trying to tell you that something is also contribute to excessive secretion of ACG in this particular uh, patient. What other condition are you thinking about? Chorea epithelioma. Chorea epithelioma, they always tell you about. They always claim for some ACG. Either it is a sudden increase in the woman that is still pregnant or a sudden increase in uh, patient after abortion. Here we have an ambulance uh, delivered a 21-year-old woman to the department colicky abdominal pain and bloody discharge from genital tracts. The thirst is stopped and led to six weeks of gestation. The gestational tract was palpated in the cervical canal. The thorough appendage were not part of the furnaces were free deep and pleasure. Discharge from genital tracts are bloody and profuse. What is the most likely diagnosis? You see, the patient is experiencing this. So, right now, this is not a threat of abortion, majorly to be about the lower abdominal uh, pain. Incipient abortion is initial abortion, that is, it should just be my blood, the blood is, the, the blood discharge is not going to be profuse. It is not interrupted fallopian pregnancy, they will tell us information relating to the fact that the fallopian to be affected. This is not cervical pregnancy, they will tell us about uh, cervical cyanosis and so on. This is a patient that is having abortion in progress. Abortion is going on right now. The 30 year old woman survived two operations on account of extrauterine pregnancy. Both tubes were removed. You see, both tubes were removed, like meaning <coughs> this woman can never fertilize a spermatozoa. She consulted a doctor with questions about positive abortion. What can be advised in this case? The best thing to do today is to do an uh, to is to fight is to do an external uh, fertilization. You have to fertilize it and then implant into the uterus. That's the only thing you can do since the tubes have been removed. And that is in this case is extracorporeal uh, 
fertilization. On the fifth day, after reading the whole question and everything, the fact is, pathological, pathoscopic examination revealed being shaped again. We have a we have diplococci. The major diplococci here is uh, acute gonorrhea endocervicitis gonorrhea. 26 year old woman complains about edematous swelling and painfulness of mammary glands, headache and telephonous irritability. This signs turn up five days before menstruation and disappears after it starts. Again, this is a patient with premenstrual syndrome. Premenstrual syndrome. Alright. 49 year old complaint of headache, head and neck going out, increased perspiration. You can see the blood pressure rise up to 170 or red. Memory impairment and so on. Body weight increased by five kilograms. What is the most likely diagnosis? This is a woman that is forty-nine years old. The you know the the climacteric period is usually just like two years or so before menopause, around menopause, and even in some instances up to seventy years of age. So here's a 49 year old man can complain about headache and all these signs, some definitely and body weight increased by five over half a year. So this climateric syndrome. We're having a woman with temperature of 38.8, complaints of acute pain in lower abdomen and uh, sexual life out of wedlock and two artificial abortions. There are no changes in the uterus. The appendix are enlarged and painful on both sides. But the these studies are prevalent and profuse. What do you want to do? You want to do a biological analysis of such prevalent discharge. So biological and bacteroscopic analysis. Whenever you have a prevalent discharge, do such pathological uh, analysis. 27-year-old patient, second labor. Uh, delivery was at time, normal cause, third day of postpartum period, body temperature is normal, cause is normal, blood pressure is normal, everything is normal, Lokia is bloody, like moderate, as on third day, begin to, day after, we'll be having cells. So what is most probable, this is just a physiological cause of postpartum period. Again, from first to third day, Lokia is usually bloody but to woman is 25 years old it is a second day of postpartum period it is a first time of complicated labor Lokia should be bloody the 32 year old patient consulted a doctor after being unable to get pregnant for five to six years five the primary the primary pregnant ended in artificial abortion after the vaginal examination and not just an diagnosis and to make dry cyst of right ovary. What is the optimum uh, treatment in this condition? See, endometrial cyst of right ovary, and the patient is unable to get pregnant for like five to six years. This patient is going to be in love with surgical laparoscopy. So, we are going to suffer for now and Almost immediately, we should expect the second uh, video completing this particular file. Have a nice day.